Welcome to another episode of Morning Mojo with me, your host, Shane Solomon. This morning, I'm delighted to welcome on the sofa for you to listen to and to watch here on YouTube, the wonderful Tracy Acock. It's great to have you with me and I know you're super busy, so thank you so much. And I want to get straight into the content and why is it important for us to have a morning routine, Tracy? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Shane. Lovely to see you. Um... It's something I talk about quite a lot, actually, because, you know, it's easy to hit the snooze button, but then the day tends to run us and we can feel on the back foot of life generally, like we're always trying to catch up. So I really go by the have some sort of morning routine. People like Mel Robbins and Jeff Bezos, they all successful people all have a morning routine and there's a small habits and rituals that can just start your day in the best way. So um, it could be a five minute meditation. It could be a dog walk, whatever it is. It's something that just uh, helps you ease into the day and just feel like you have got some structure and focus to your day. And would you mind then sharing with us what your kind of morning routine is? Well, how do you start your day? Well, it's not for everyone, but I do like to get up and meet some friends and we go in the sea all year round. And um, it, it, takes, it takes a bit of a challenge in the winter, of course, but that's what it's all about. And um, it's that stress ad- adaptation. And then I might walk the dog. So I try to add some stillness. So I do like a little guided meditation. It doesn't have to be, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't have to be complicated, um, but it just sets you up for the day. Just knowing that you've done what you really wanted to do. And, um, you know, it's, it's, if you don't manage it, it's fine. There's no pressure. But you'll find that just the small habits and consistency can definitely um, see you through life, to be honest, I believe. Yeah. Now, this sea swimming is really starting to take on. I see more and more people doing it. Mm-hmm. I know over probably 12 months ago when I started seeing it on my social media feeds that people were doing this, I'm thinking, look, <laughs> absolute craziness. I'm more of a 38-degree hot tub man. Um, <laughs> but it seems to be, you know, being well-received. And there's obvious health benefits there. Mm-hmm. What would I'm you sure. say they are? Well, the, I mean, there are many um, physical benefits that have been reported now. And I mentioned the stress stress adaptation. And so there are many things like, you know, it can actually increase metabolism, improve your immunity. But for me, one of the biggest things is is a sense of community. There's something that women contact me about a lot is this feeling of loneliness that can come happen as you get older. It's harder to make friends. But if you find people that have... Uh, like-minded people, you have something in common, whatever it is, you know, whether it's knitting or sea swimming or, you know, g- g- lifting weights, you have already have that, um, that, that thing in common that bonds you, that brings you together. And so obviously in the middle of winter, it's far harder to get up and go in the sea and obviously more dangerous potentially on your own if you've got a group of women sort of whooping and shouting and screaming all together um, or men obviously but we're you know it's the part of the blue tits which is a national um, body of women and we are part of the nuki blue tits and um, I've made so many great friendships and so this is something I say to women a lot is to find um, whatever it is that you love to do find other people that love to do that too and you'll already have that that initial thing in common. And then if you're lucky, friendships grow. Um, well, then we all go off and do our own thing. You know, we leave and go back and do the stuff that happens in the day, all from very different backgrounds. But it, whatever it is that you love to do, find someone else and then you build from there. I like that. You mentioned friendships there and building mm-hmm. friendships. Now, of course, we were first connected through a mutual friend of ours, Charlotte Lodi, mm-hmm. who is just lovely. And uh, Charlotte does a lot of coaching, but you do coaching too mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to talk to you about how to regain confidence and self-belief for those listening and watching mm-hmm. who might be struggling with that. What mm-hmm. kind of light can you shed on that? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, certainly the women who come to me um, often around menopause, post-menopause, and there are so many changes, um, both physical and emotional, that we go through in that kind of phase of life. And I think um, 
a place to start, to be honest, is, you know, why you've lost your confidence and self-belief. What, why do you feel the way you do about you? I know my own, you know, lived experience. I, I really struggled with anxiety and loss of confidence during that kind of menopause transition. Although at the time for me, a few years ago, it wasn't talked about in the same way it is now. Sure. But I like to encourage the women who come to me. We, it's about getting to know yourself better. So that reconnection with self. So often it starts with the way you talk to yourself. That voice in your head that perhaps you have, you're not really conscious that it's that voice that can be holding you back. So if you um, take a moment, perhaps notice if you're saying, oh, for God's sake, what's wrong with you? You, you never do what you say you're going to do, etc." And that's actually, you know, going to keep you stuck. So it's getting um, used to noticing that voice in your mind and getting used to how this, these the subconscious mind can actually run the show for us. It can, you know, push you forward. It can really hold you back. So it's tuning in to what your subconscious mind is actually saying to you. We have something like up to 80,000 thoughts a day, and the majority of them can be negative, and they're often on a thinking loop. So what you worried about yesterday, you'll probably worry about today and tomorrow too. So get to notice what that thinking pattern is that is keeping you stuck and feeling small and like you you don't you can't make a change you can't move forward you perhaps living in the past full of regret wishing things were different wishing you'd made different decisions and so that's what I help women do to change that thinking pattern let go of the past and instead look forward with hope and optimism yeah and of course thought i talk about it a lot on this podcast and everything is thought and the way we think and those feelings and things like that and it's good to have someone as an accountability partner yeah. as well you know yeah. by having a coach and, mm. and that's the thing i I've, I've come to realize as i've got older when i was younger i was like no i didn't need a coach i'm fine i'm mm. fine what i've realized actually is all the best coaches also have coaches yeah so you know it's um it's very important i think I think it's, it's definitely having somebody who believes in you. So my coaching is, is, a, is a mixture. There is some health in there because obviously I was a nurse for, you know, 25 years. Mm. But it's actually about, um, you know, getting to know yourself on the inside and fueling that self-belief. So maybe starting the day, going back to morning routines, one of the things I like to encourage are positive affirmations. There's some evidence that, you know, neuroscience now would tell us that, you know, if we um, repeat a positive, a uh, confidence-giving affirmation, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, when those theta brain waves are more receptive, you're actually talking to your subconscious mind. I've got this. It's not, you know, um, I, I'm I'm my own best friend. I'm always learning and growing. You know, whatever it is that really re reaches you on the inside, it's another thing so easily add to your morning routine. Thoughts become things. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm yeah. a big believer in that. I remember way back, and again, I've said it on the podcast, is that I've always visualized when I was at school becoming a professional singer. That's all I ever wanted to do. And I remember going to the career um, advice people and they said, well, look, you know, you can't do that. You need to have a proper job. You have to have a proper career. Long story short, by the time I was 18, I was a professional singer because I used to, I remember, you know, mm. being in the mirror in the bathroom, pinch mum's airbrush and pretend it was a microphone and, you know, and it was just that same thought over and over and over mm. again. I swear that mm. would have done it mm. because I was just living it in my head. Yeah. You know, well, so the, that's the, the self belief. But if, if in, in the, the other contrast to that is that, you feel that this you've got nothing to help you to believe in. You don't believe in you, then it's really hard to find that on your own. And that's where I believe someone like myself comes in. You sure. Know. Now, as 25 years as a nurse in the NHS, what mm -hmm. kind of skills would you say you took from that career that's, you know, transferred now over to what you do now? Um, um, my communication skills... <laughs> Uh, you know, there were some very, um, you know, wow, extreme and, you know, heart-rending situations over the years as a cancer nurse, you know, go to that saying. And, um, yeah, definitely 
well, compassion, empathy, communication skills, are those are probably the mainstay now also of, of what I do in my coaching world. Yeah. Now, one of the questions I've got here is what women should know prior to menopause. Any tips there? Well, I've got lots, but um, in terms of, you know, getting the main point across, I think, it's really important to, because menopause conversation now has become really quite polarised, I think. And um, HRT, not HRT, it's, it's, and it's quite a minefield. And I think my belief is that younger women in general might feel really, you know, scared or, or that this whole thing about the menopause and how it can change you and nothing's ever the same. And I, I guess my advice to a younger woman would be to do your research. We're all unique, of course. And so it's a puzzle. It's not just HRT. It's not just anything. It's about lifestyle. It's about, again, you know, understanding perhaps that anxiety or different things may come for you that weren't part of your life before, but it's a phase. And actually, you know, do your research, find out what you need, and then know that better days ahead following that. It's not the end. It's a the next chapter yeah it's the next phase right it's the next phase and to be fair through the studio here i've had many ladies come in and talk about the subject and it, it very is much out there mm. in fact there's a lady i need to put you in touch with mm. from reading she she's from reading she has a business production um, manufacturing products for menopause in london um but she's very passionate about it and we've done bits and bobs but the amount of people I've had come through the studio doors here and talk about this very subject is something that um, it's nice to hear being talked about because, you know, I have a partner that's mm. perimenopause, you mm. know, and it's, it happens. It's, it's life, right? It's part of the, the journey. 50% of people are going to go through it. Mm, mm. <laughs> and, you know, back, um, let's say back in the day, but, you know, it just wasn't talked about. No. I was a nurse in a female uh, orientated environment and it was, oh my God, the, the shame and the, and the stuff that was hidden uh, because I, then it just wasn't, um, just wasn't a thing that, you know, you discussed. So of sure. course, you know, once you're able to talk about it, which we do today. Mm. Um, but I think the main thing is an encouragement that it, it's a phase and um, it's, it doesn't define who you are forever. Sure. One of the most popular questions I like to ask on here is how you encourage self-worth and actually belief in yourself. It really kind of goes back to what I said in the first place about getting to know yourself on the inside. Obviously, the women that I talk to the most are women that often have been carers for many years in whatever way. And little by little, they've lost sight of who they are because they've put others' needs before our own. You know, we're nurturing by design and so one of the things I love to encourage women to do is to start to take that you know remember you put on your your own oxygen mask first for a reason to care for those around you and so at first it's like taking maybe five minutes for you call it self-care whatever you want to call it but by taking that time for you it builds that kind of self-respect that you have for yourself which builds your self-worth. So it's about just recognizing that you have needs. It's not a luxury to take time for you. Um, and it's just, I think as well, coming back to the fact that it's all possible for you. You might not feel it right now, but it really is. And so it's just finding whatever you need to start seeing yourself in that way that there's, there's time for you to be all you ever wanted to be, whatever your age. Great advice. Now, what about zest for life? Where where did you get that kind of, you know, zest to, you know, enter the next stage of your uh, mm. journey? I think, you know, one a thing that I also talk about a lot uh, with the women who come to me is purpose. I think you can kind of, you know, wake up around 50 in my experience. And I think actually, wow, is this is this it? Is this all there is? Is this what my life is now? 
and it can leave you feeling quite empty and disconnected. And so, um, again, it's finding really what lights you up and it's different for all of us, as we've been saying before we hit record. And um, I think it's finding something that drives you. And so for me, you know, in nursing, it was making a difference, as cheesy as it sounds. And in my next chapter, in my second career, it's also making a difference to whoever comes to me. So it's finding that passion and purpose. And it, I, you know, it may be a, um, a short term purpose. It may be training for a 5K. It might be doing a, I, I did a Ben Nav- Nevis charity trek. And the purpose that it gives you in that short term. So it doesn't have to be a life defining thing. But it's, you know, it's finding what lights you up and that pushes you on. Do you know what? There's so many people that I speak to find it hard to work out what their purpose is. Oh, yeah. I know. I I help people every day. Mm. Yeah. And I think we can become sort of just totally overwhelmed with the word. Like it's, you know, being like. I don't know, Mother Teresa or something. It it doesn't have to be a life-defining thing, but it's the thing of what it's what's your why? What makes you get up in the morning? You know, and um, of course that can change from month to month, but it's the the thing. And I help women with we make vision boards and we do visualizations and we help to really uncover what what actually a journal prompt. What, what is it that is actually holding me back from being who I want to be or doing what I want to do? And it's really digging in a bit, which can feel a bit uncomfortable at first, but that's always then about growth. And that's what moves you on to the next step. Indeed. So I'm always fascinated what motivates you. So kind of favorite books, speakers, you know, quotes, anything that, you know, that you follow that can inspire you? Well, certainly something, a book that I go back to, it's old now, but she's very much around and amazing is Jen Sincero, How to Be a Badass. And um, I don't know if you've ever read it. It's just, it's it's humorous. Um, It's about, you know, actually purpose finding your purpose is it, it's a, it's a mix of everything with some businessy stuff in so that's how to be a badass um jen sincero i love that and i go back to it all the time and um i actually in terms of women who inspire me so many actual now in my mind even patience um oh, the courage and um you know the women who come to me carry in a lot at times and still keeping going every day. That's the type of strength. And I love, um, oh, God, I forget her name now, but the the Women's England manager, Susha. Oh, right. So I wouldn't know this. <laughs> anyway, I'm not a football but she's, fan. Okay, but she's, she's, there's a quiet, calm strength about her that I love. Sure. Very inspiring. And the quote is a Maya Angelou. It's something like, I'll probably butcher it, but it's something like, people will forget what you said and forget what you did, but people will always remember how you, you made, made them, them feel. feel. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, and that's that's so true. That's so true. And it's it's all about the feelings. Yeah. And um yeah, absolutely fantastic. Now, what's the best way for people to get hold of you? Are you because I know you're huge on Instagram. <laughs> so is that the obvious place to start? Um Well, yes, actually, probably I've got, um, so on Instagram, I'm at the Wellbeing Wisdom Club. I have a website, which is Wellbeing Wisdom Club. And I have, um, I love my email. I write a a weekly newsletter, but links are in my bio on Instagram. I think that's probably the best place to start. So we sent everyone there. Now, Tracy, I've got to ask you now, is there anything else that you can, um, put on our wonderful listeners, our followers, um, with your experience. I've not asked you about anything that you're working on, anything that you just want to, you know, get off your chest, anything at all that might add value to people listening today. Um, well, I am, I am actually working on, um, a a free guide for women who, um, probably 50 plus, Uh, So we say, you know, midlife and beyond, but it's a free guide to help you get more from your life. You call it your midlife manifesto, and I'll be releasing that soon. So it's a lot of things actually that we've touched on today. But um, yeah, I think it's a, you know, we all need someone in our corner. 
And um, this might be a good place to start. I think it might be. Well, look, Tracy, it's always great to see you. I absolutely love your energy. It's always a pleasure to have you around the studio. So look, if you're not already following this amazing <laughs> woman, make sure you do that on Instagram, especially absolutely ginormous on Instagram. <laughs> And that is, uh, we'll make sure it's in the show notes and everything, like the links to the Instagram page. But as always, I would like to say a massive thank you to the wonderful producer of this podcast, which is Jay Kennett, for doing this today. As always, I hope you have the most amazing remainder of your day. And for myself and Tracy, we will see you soon. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Thanks, Shane.